It's been a long time since you guys have done this. How has sort of the distance of time improved the show and come back this way? Uh, hard for me to say. I mean, you know, that's more like uh, you want the people to judge that, right? Like, we're better. We're just better. <laughs> Believe me, we're better. But I can tell you that as, as an actor, as actors, Jillian and I, and, I th and, and Mitch may say this as well, I think we're better. You know, we're more experienced. When, we, when I started doing the show, I had very little experience. Uh, Jillian had very little experience. We had a certain kind of greenness and enthusiasm that was nice, which we don't have anymore. <laughs> but now we can, we're capable of, of, of doing a lot more as actors, I think, Jillian and I, at this point. And I think that that was interesting and fun for me to go back to a, a character that I'd established as a green young actor and try to approach it as an experienced actor, which is what I am now. With a character you're that familiar with and you've done for so long, was there anything that in the new scripts that were just shocking and surprising or, or anything that, or was it really just what you expected? No, it wasn't shocking and surprising. I mean, it was tough. The, the first episode, Mulder's kind of down, you know, and Mulder is the engine of the show. Like, Scully puts on the brakes. Mulder puts his foot on the gas. Um, if Mulder's putting his foot on the brakes, it's odd feeling. And then, so the first episode felt a little odd, but it was necessary because that's where we find the characters. But after the first episode, Mulder's got his foot on the gas again, and then Mulder's going to kind of fall into the richness of their roles, which is, you know, her stopping me and me trying to push forward and all that. So you're kind of like our avatar as like fans on this show. Oh my God. So what is that like to, to like be that fan and get to like stand in for us there? Well, I think it's been, it's hard for me to not get emotional talking about it. But when I, you know, people knew that I was a big fan and when I mentioned it, the positive reaction from people and people saying stuff like that, that like, he's one of us and he's living our dream was, I mean, it's, I was so moved and touched by that it's 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 it was absolutely wonderful uh the reaction from the from the x Files fans about that because i went on message boards and i saw and on twitter and people saying stuff like that and on tumblr and reddit it was very very moving well the show sort of has a, has had a history of being really great with fans it's named characters after fans and right. and things like that so this is like that what are you so what, tell us about your character and what your like, favorite part about being on it is. Favorite part about being on it is being on it. I mean, it's, it's, it's so hard to... Uh, I just like... It's a small part. I just like that forever, for the rest of my life, I will have been part of the X-Files universe, you know? Uh, I'm canon. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the craziest part. Like, meeting these guys is wonderful. They're so wonderful and kind and hilarious and cool. But just to be able to tell myself, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm part of the X-Files universe, that's, that's crazy. After seeing the, the first episode, there's a lot of callbacks and a lot of the myth arc, but, like, some of it has been cut out. How much work was it to figure out what to bring forward and sort of what to leave behind? You couldn't put it all in there because it's only 44 minutes of entertainment, so uh, we wanted to be honest to all we'd laid down before. But you, as you see, we raised questions about uh, the myth arc and uh, aspects of it. So uh, we, uh, we're wondering who's telling the truth and who's, who's lying. And you've introduced a new character that sort of brings a lot of that to like, Joe McHale's character it really straddles the truth and lie line. Is that gonna be teased out in, in the, throughout the season? How much is it about truth versus conspiracy? Well, I mean, the truth is the truth is out there. Uh, Mulder wants to believe uh, the conspiracy uh, has uh, fabulous elements to it uh, that may or may not be true. So, and we play with some uh, new revelations in the mythology during the course of the se the series of six. Uh, you'll see Joel McHale back again in the show. And I know you said in the in the panel that four of the episodes are standalones. I'm sure you guys had so many ideas. How did you pick like just four to actually do? Well, we only we knew we were only doing six episodes, and so when I decided I was going to book in the show with mythology episodes, that left four to do. Luckily, I had three really excellent writers from the uh, the 
beginning of the show to come back and do it. Glenn Morgan, James Wong, and Darren Morgan. And then I did another episode, too. Uh, we all had ideas that we uh, had been thinking about uh, for a while that we wanted to do as X-Files episodes, and that's simply how it happened. And so for new people coming into the show, is you, how hard is it to make it like accessible and like as great for them as it was for, for those of us who've been watching it for years? Well, it, it, did you see the episode? Okay, so you know when you see the episode that we take you back really through a historical document, a file, if you will, of who Mulder and Scully are, what they've been through. And we take you, uh, I believe, through a... Uh, a primer of uh, what the X-Files is and who Mulder and Scully are. So I think for, for, new, uh, for a new audience, I think the show is accessible, but we really made it for the hardcore fans. Of the characters, Skinner's sort of the one who's still where he was, still at the FBI. How does that continuity versus the massive changes for Mulder and Scully sort of play up for those characters? Well, he's, he's, he's in place, um, and he's in a position that uh, he sees things going terribly awry um, in the situations that transpire over the course of the six episodes. And he thinks it's very important to to try to, to bring Mulder and Scully back into the fold to address these these, these problems. Um, so it's it's um, the fact that he's able to do that is given his, his position, still being an assistant director, um, Tells me, tells me that there's, he's got to have some connection with, with somebody who's got, who's got a lot of power um, to be able to allow him to do that. And is the dynamic between the characters massively different, or are we going to see the sort of classic exasperated Skinner? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's not good. It's, it's, I mean, he's still the same cat. He's still the same guy, and, and um, same, same personality. So when, when there's things that are going to be exasperating, he's going to... It's it, you know be very uh, it's going to be very obvious, um, but he's also very supportive. And I, like I've said before, I think that, I think that ultimately he is he is within the FBI he is Mulder and Scully's champion.